And when I say perfect, I mean perfect. Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial. And in this one, I'm going to be showing you how to bake perfect displacement maps because it seems like nobody knows how to do it correctly. Uh, they're missing either the open EXR thing, the orth orthographic camera. Uh, basically, there's a lot of things to juggle around and that's why nobody can bake displacement maps. And uh, Blender is very guilty of when you go to uh, Cycles and you go to the Bake Options, which is where you can bake all sorts of different maps. You're going to notice there is no option for bump and there's no uh, option for height or displacement, which are all essentially the same thing, meaning you're kind of you're thrown into the wild. You need to figure it out yourself. So let me show you how to do it. So we're, we're going to just switch back to Eevee. So uh, what is the concept? What is it that we're trying to do? Well, imagine, if you will, imagine you have some geometry. In this case, I've made this hard surface thing. It's uh, 73 ish thousand faces meaning that it's too much geometry for this kind of thing, right? Especially if we want to make 10 duplicates of this, then we're getting pretty close to a million faces just for, you know, some pretty small details that maybe we want to put all over a corridor. Uh, meaning we want to convert this geometric data into texture data, namely a bump map, height map, or displacement map. And again, Blender has no way for you to do that. So let me show you the best, the perfect, and I'm going to show you the way to do it that isn't messi missing any of the steps. This recording is a disaster. So um, you can see I've already made this example uh, displacement map. This is what we're going to try to achieve. And you can see that um, I've taken the camera, uh, put it above in orthographic mode, and then done a bunch of stuff to extract height information. So that means the first step is our camera view needs to be bird's eye view, needs to be above. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to click N, which gives us the location and rotation and scale of the camera. Assuming you have your camera selected, we can just zero this out. So zero out location and rotation, and then bring it up on the Z axis. So it's kind of above it. This is what it looks like in 3D. It's just facing uh, directly down. And make sure right now you're going to hopefully notice that uh, we're kind of viewing this via a perspective lens. So there's a bit of distortion in some sense. We don't want this. We want to look at it kind of like a blueprint um, where all lines are orth orth orthogonal. Basically, what I'm saying is take your camera, set it to uh, orthographic, okay? And then we can actually zoom in. So it's taking up our frame. And this is how you set up your camera. If you're using perspective, uh, you're going to get the wrong displacement map. And when you uh, use it on a different object, there's going to be some distortion because of that perspective. Fine. Um, next thing is that we don't necessarily need this like 1920 by 1080, you know, frame here, right? Um, we just want to capture this. Usually we use a square texture for these kinds of things. So in the output tab, let's set this to, again, the higher the square resolution, the more detail you're going to have in your map. So I recommend at least 2K. So that's 2048 by 2048. And then you might just need to zoom in just a bit. Maybe zoom out a little. Okay, cool. So now we have our setup. How do we extract height information? Because again, Cycles doesn't let us do this. So if we go to the render tab right now, we're using Eevee. Uh, we're just basically seeing some diffuse or maybe principled BSDF stuff, right? It's reacting to a uh, lighting, which is not necessarily what we want. So in the shading workspace, what you're going to do is select your object, create a new material. We can call this anything, anything under the sun. I'm going to call it whatever I, whatever I want. There we go. We do not need this principled BSDF. Let's look at this via rendered mode. Uh, what we want is to extract height information. Again, we want to know at each point on our surface, on our geometry, how elevated is it, where uh, this is zero. And as you go up, the elevation goes up, right? Well, to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a geometry node and look at the position, which is a vector quantity, meaning it has the position in X, Y, and Z, three-dimensional but we only want the uh, Z, you know, how elevated it is vertically in the Z sense. So add a separate X, Y, Z. We don't care about X. We don't care about Y. We care about Z. And by the way, you can set the same thing up where instead of this facing up and the cameras above it, you could do it like this, in which case you do X axis, right? Just depends on your orientation. Uh, but this is probably the easiest way to do it. And you can see that already we have something that makes a lot of sense. We have a gradient that as it ascends vertically, it becomes wider and wider and brighter and brighter, which is saying our elevation is going up and it makes uh, it's more obvious when we look at it via the side, the side view. 
However, um, you could pretty much um, render this out after changing a couple settings. However, this is not optimal because what we're doing right now is we're starting at zero, maybe going up to 0.5 and that's it, right? We wanna make our texture go from zero to one, meaning that the highest elevation you can have is the very top of the surface. Right now it's kind of floating above here. So we're kind of losing a bit of detail that we could uh, get back. So let's uh, fix that range is the way we'd say that. Uh, to do that, we're gonna add in a math node, set this to multiply, and you can see that Right now we're multiplying by one, which means we change nothing. But as we increase this, you see that our gradient kind of goes from, you know, instead of zero to like somewhere above, uh, the one becomes the top of the model, right? So you can see as we increase this, um, it's doing what we want, but we don't know exactly what value it is that we need to stop at. So to do that, or to make, make a way for you to check this, you're gonna add another math node set to greater than one. And right now this whole thing is black, indicating that at no point is our elevation greater than one. Um, so what we wanna do is just increase this uh, multiplication, this uh, scaling value that we made. Keep increasing it until eventually, there we go. Eventually you see that some uh, white uh, pops up at the top, meaning that now we've kind of started clipping. There's areas of this model that have an elevation greater than one, which is not what we want. So I'm just gonna find the value exactly where the cutoff is. And basically you wanna find the biggest value where everything is black, so just there. And then delete this uh, greater than node, we no longer need it. Okay, cool, so now we should have a perfect gradient that starts at zero and one should be very, very slightly above, but it's, it's a pretty good uh, tight range, which is what we want. Okay, cool. So essentially what we've just done is we've um, kind of painted our uh, model with what's called a height map. And of course we need to extract this, but we have height or elevation information on our model where zero is the bottom, one is very, very close to the top. So now the question is, how are we supposed to render this? Because there's a lot of ways to mess this up. First thing you need to do is in the render tab, let's go to our camera view. Let's go to layout as well, just so we can see what we're doing. First of all, go to the render tab and I want you to go to color management and do not forget this. Don't leave it on filmic, change it to standard. And you can see already this very, very uh, drastically changes the look. So filmic, standard. What standard does is it basically says where it's one, it's gonna be white, which is what we want. Filmic uh, is uh, useful, but uh, part of what filmic does is one is just this gray. And then as you go towards infinity, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter, never actually reaching white. We don't want this. Set it to standard, okay? Boom, standard. Next, um, let's say that we render this. You're gonna notice that the background is gray, right? Where really we want the background to be black because it has an elevation of zero, almost as if, the, almost as if uh, this model is like sitting on a plane, which you could either like change the background or for this model, apply the same material, which will make it black because it has an elevation of zero already. It's already on the uh, X, Y plane. But assume you didn't do that. Um, to fix this without adding that plane, uh, what you do is in Render tab, go to Film, Enable Transparent Render. Now, technically, this made our background transparent, but if we get rid of the alpha channel, the transparency, it will by default set to zero. So effectively, we fixed it. Okay, cool. And now for the biggest mistake that um, a lot of people make, uh, do not buy displacement maps or bump maps or whatever. Do not purchase them if they make this mistake. Um, in the output tab, we do not want to render this as a PNG or a JPEG or almost anything in here. You need lin something that has linear space, meaning that uh, something that goes from zero to one, like this uh, height gradient we've made, uh, stays like that when we render. Um, almost all of these file formats, PNG, JPEG, um, do some kind of gamma correction meaning that it's very useful for making stuff look good and most people can't notice it, but it adds this uh, curvature that we don't want. Uh, stuff doesn't stay linear, right? Uh, meaning, and, and here's why it's important. If you render with one of these bad file formats and then you use this displacement map, um, things will not ascend vertically. There will be some curvature, meaning you've actually changed the geometry that you wanna be uh, deforming into in the first place. You need something with linear space. Um, I think TIFF has this, but what I know for sure has this is OpenEXR. 
So I'd recommend use OpenEXR. You can maybe use TIFF, look into it, make sure it has a linear space, but OpenEXR definitely has this. Do not use PNG or JPEG. I don't know how many times I can stress this. So OpenEXR is good. Uh, we don't necessarily need the alpha channel. Again, we want our background to be black. Right? There's nothing necessarily wrong with keeping the alpha channel. Maybe it's even useful information, but I'm just going to keep the RGB data. And the second reason that we use OpenEXR over anything else is because is it's because it gives us the option to save this as either 16 or 32 bit uh, color information. I'm going to go for float full, which is 32 bits. Here you can see this is 16. And basically what this means is that we get a ton of precision. And this is important to where in, in the case where we use this for displacement, where we want our points to be elevated by a certain amount and any amount of rounding error is going to make our model look choppy, right? It's going to look like it's made out of steps instead of a nice line. So you want as much precision as possible. So OpenEXR fixes the linear space issue and it fixes this, um, you know, maximum amount of um, decimal places issue. We got the most amount of precision. So keep this at 32 bit. 16 is fine but um, there's no reason to not do 32 bit. Okay, cool. And now that you have this all set up, you know, we've done our height map, you've done your standard, you've done your orthographic camera, you've done your open EXR. These are all things that people forget, right? Once you've done all this, you can hit render. And the nice thing about this is it really doesn't take that long. So yeah, we can't bake with cycles, but you set it up with EV with all the correct settings, it's nearly instant. And once you have this rendered, you do Alt-Shift-S, or you could do Image Save As, so Alt-Shift-S. We're going to save this on the desktop, calling it proper, proper displacement. And notice this is an EXR, as in Open EXR. Make sure that before you save this, yes, it's RGB, Open EXR, and full, uh, full float, meaning 32-bit uh, color channel data. Click Save As Image. And now we have our displacement map. And I guess this is the end of the tutorial. However, I would like to show you that this actually does work. Um, we could do it on a sphere. You could do it on any geometry technically, but I just want to do a nice quick example. So here's how you might use this. Uh, here we have everything set to cycles and a displacement map. If we don't want to use this as a bump map, which would work fine, this is just height information. Uh, but if we want to use this as a displacement map, make sure to add a subdivision surface set to adaptive by the way uh, experimental is what gives you this adaptive option this is going to let us subdivide on the fly by whatever amount that we need and then in the shading workspace we're going to work on our material make sure that your material by the way once we make it it's not going to actually do any displacement if you don't set the uh, settings to not only bump only but either displacement only or displacement and bump so make sure you do that and then to set up our displacement map, you should already know this. Um, you just import in your displacement map. Just need to find it. Here it is, per, uh, proper displacement DXR. I'm going to take this, put it on, in our displacement socket, and you're thinking, oh, wow, the, what a <laughs> you made this long tutorial, and this is what the displacement ends up looking like. Uh, what you need to do is add a displacement node in between, connect this to height, and there's a couple things we need to fix to make this, uh, you know, not look like garbage. So first of all, uh, mid-level, set this to zero, meaning our plane stays where it's supposed to be, right? So black means don't move it at all. Second of all, it wasn't this tall at all. It was something closer to like 0.1 in scale, maybe 0.2. So you can see now we're getting close. However, we have heavy, heavy, heavy distortion on our geometry. So uh, the, the rest of this is pretty much saying we don't have enough geometry right now. My laptop's clicking. Uh, we don't have enough geometry right now to add this amount of detail. So you just want to take your dicing scale, bring it down. And the lower you bring it, the longer it's going to take to render, but the more detail we have. And this is still way too tall. So something like 0.1 should do the trick. And you can already see we're getting pretty, pretty, I don't know why I said it twice. We're getting very close results to uh, what we originally had. You can still see that there's some detail especially when we look at the sides, there's some choppiness, and that will be fixed by um, lowering this even further, or you could uh, render out a higher resolution displacement map. But you can see that vertical lines remain vertical. There's no curvature from that PNG nonlinear workflow type of stuff. And uh, everything's working exactly how you expect. And again, we've kind of made this a procedural thing in the sense that it's a displacement map, not you know raw geometry meaning that we can always like change where it is. It's going to take a while to update. 
But that's the cool thing about uh, using displacement maps. You can pretty much control them. You could add noise to it. You could do whatever. Um, you could even cut off at certain elevations. But there you go. Um, this should be the best tutorial on YouTube about how to bake displacement maps. It goes over all the common errors. So hopefully you found this useful and you can start baking your own height maps, which really are displacement maps or bump maps. It, really displacement maps, you just do this whole 32-bit thing to get that precision. That's the difference. But... Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, the best way to support this channel is via Patreon. Um, if you have the means to do so and you find it, you find this channel valuable and you want to do it, I greatly appreciate it. Um, all the patrons I already have, thank you for watching. I'm assuming a lot of you are watching. So again, uh, Patreon, you get a bunch of exclusive stuff. Um, you get some exclusive tutorials, early access, um, behind the scenes stuff, uh, tutorial files. However, I do like to talk about it as if it's a donation, because that's what it is. So if you have the means to do so, and you want to, uh, thank you. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this free tutorial about baking the perfect displacement maps. I've been CG Matter, Default Cube. You've been you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.